AMD announced stuff at CES that I'm not aware of because I'm filming this intro before the announcement and filming that segment of the video after I film the rest of this video. Also, Samsung's finally bringing us micro LED. I'm so excited. This is how a display should be. And you should be using Bing instead of Google. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Segway into me recording later. So AMD just finished their announcement of their products at CES, and I'm here back in the future to report all of it to you. And there's a lot of crazy good stuff and a lot of disappointing stuff and a little bit in between, but AMD really came out with some heavy hitting products, starting off with their mobile lineup, specifically the Ryzen 7040 series. AMD is announcing their new Ryzen 7000 series of mobile CPUs, and they've kind of confirmed this in the past that they are going to be shifting away from their traditional naming scheme on these laptops, whereas before the number would indicate what generation it is, whereas 5000 would have meant that it was on Zen 2, and then you would expect 6000 would mean Zen 3. However, AMD broke from that, and you could get 6000 was Zen 2 or Zen 3. Well, now it's just more confusing with the Ryzen 7000 because you can get Zen 2, Zen 3, or Zen 4, but the 7040 series specifically is going to be the Zen 4 chip. So the latest generation, and these are going to be either for the mainstream stuff or for the high-end gaming, including something like the Ryzen 7045, which is 16 cores, 32 threads, has 80 megabytes of total cache based on five nanometers, and has RDNA 2 GPUs with DDR5. But the most impressive thing for me, even though that Ryzen 9 is gonna be great in the high-end laptops, with an RTX 4090, the one that I care the most about is the 7040 itself, which is Zen 4, eight core, 16 threads, but it's based on four nanometers, and it actually has 12 RDNA 3 compute units. So that's on the latest AMD GPUs. They're gonna be shipping that. I believe they said that's coming out in March. These things are going to be insane in terms of just mobile performance. Hopefully, we start seeing them come to handhelds. This would be the perfect upgrade for a Steam Deck. I'm, if, if I'm just being straight up honest, I would love to see that. Hopefully we can get other handheld manufacturers to bring that to us. But AMD definitely delivering hard in the mobile form factor, showing off benchmarks, showing that it's faster than Intel's 12th gen, even though 13th gen just got announced, showing that it's faster than an M1 Pro, but it has a lot of goodness to it. I'm very, very excited for that 7040. You got things like the 7945HX, which is gonna be their top of the line chip, 75 watt TDP, likely gonna to be paired with high-end GPUs, but a lot to be celebrated there. Now, here comes the middling part of the show for CES, AMD coming out with their X3D chip announcements, which everybody was hoping that it would happen. I personally didn't even think that they were gonna mention it, let alone give us a release time frame. And it turns out, yes, indeed, we are getting X3D chips from AMD, which can be up to 30% faster than the previous gen 5800X3D. So we're getting the 7800X3D with eight cores, 16 threads, 7900X3D with 12 cores, and then the 7950X3D with 16 cores. And they all have the same exact clock speed as the non-3D chip variant. So these are looking to be great processors and that they're gonna beat out other chips but the, the, there's a little complication here. Number one, AMD showed off the 7950X3D beating the 13900K by like roughly 10% in four benchmarks, not providing a whole lot of detail. So I wouldn't necessarily trust anything, obviously, until third-party benchmarks come out. AMD did say that these are releasing in February. Some leaks indicate that it's actually gonna be February 16th, but AMD did not mention pricing at all. And one would guess that if they were confident that this was gonna be a good value chip, they would have mentioned it. However, there's like a lot of reasons why AMD probably wouldn't want to, including the fact that it would hamper the sales of the current generation of chips. They are already not selling well. AMD announced the non-X version of the chips with something like the 7700 is gonna cost 329. The 7700X is selling for roughly 350. What do you what do you price the 7800X 3D at when the 7900 is coming in at 429? Is that at 499? 
99, then that puts it within $50 of the 7900X. And then is the 7900X 3D at 599 or is that 649? Because that's where the 7950X is on sale. And then the 7950X 3D, is that at 699 or does that go up closer to eight, $900? There's a lot to be answered by AMD at the moment with their X3D chips. The benchmark is do make it seem like it is going to be a very fast chip for gaming, but AMD only showing four games not really super convincing, not giving us pricing details, either for not wanting to cannibalize their own product lineup, either for not wanting to piss off gamers right now, or because they want to hold it really tight to their chest and see and play games with Intel. That could be a possibility. Given AMD's track record as of late, it could be the former where these things might not actually be that ready and they're not actually super confident in them, kind of like the 7900 series GPUs, which had to get delayed and then still cropped up with a ton of issues, including power draw, as well as the vapor chambers not working effectively. But we also did get more GPU announcements, in case you're interested in those. RDNA 3 graphics are coming to laptops. Yeah, you guessed it. AMD announcing a slew of 7000 series laptop GPUs, 7600 MXT, 7700M, 7700S, as well as the 7600S, which all look to be fairly respectable in their product categories. Comparing frame rate, the 7600M should definitely be faster than the 6600M. And you can see here the benchmarks of the XT versus the 3060, it's 12 gig and the 3060 8 gig, even showing that it beats the desktop version of the RTX 3060. The 7700S beating out the 6700S and should be coming to a whole bunch of laptops later this year. Several of them launching in February with more of them to come at a later date. So AMD having a lot of products being announced in those product lineups. But the biggest drop that AMD had, the largest, hugest, humongous thing that I would be so excited for is an APU, my friends. But it's not the one that you would expect because they showed off their Instinct MI300 chip, which is gonna go into data centers. But this is the beefiest APU that you've seen in your entire life. I quipped that I would love to see this in a Steam Deck, but it's gonna have Zen 4 cores, CDNA 3 architecture, and a ton of other specs. Here's Dr. Lisa Su holding it on stage. That thing is a behemoth whopper of a chip, and it's gonna have 146 billion transistors, 128 gigabytes of HBM3 memory, as well as the fact that it's gonna have 3D stacking on both the CPU and the GPU in the chiplet process that it's bringing in, which is also gonna have five and six nanometers. It's crazy. There's a lot of engineering that went into this. This looks to be insane, and it's gonna be the world's first data center integrated CPU plus GPU. It looks wild. It's probably gonna cost a beefy penny. It's wow. Now let's segue to past Brett, who's gonna talk to you about other things. Thanks, future Brett, for segueing to crypto stocks. Bitcoin is up about a percent to be at 16,805. Ethereum's up 3.46% to be at 1252. And Dogecoin's up 2.65% to be at 7.2 cents. And Tesla is up 5%, which is a pretty decent climb after its collapse yesterday of 12%. It's staving off dropping to double digits for a little while longer. You know what else is good too? Reese and UFD deals. What you got? Thank you, Brett. Welcome back to UFD deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I don't know if he said anything nice, but I'm feeling so much better. I've been dosing myself with flu medication and I actually have energy again. So I'm gonna take that energy and jump straight into the deals. Starting with the SteelSeries Arctis 9 wireless gaming headset. With its 20 plus hour battery life, multiple connection options, including 2.4 gigahertz wireless and Bluetooth, which you can run simultaneously. I actually do this with my Arctis 7 so I can have Discord running on my iPad, PlayStation audio coming in. We don't get Discord on PlayStation yet. So I gotta, I gotta make a workaround. But anyway, it's only $139.99, which is $60 off at the moment. Another thing you guys might find useful is this Elgato Camlink 4K. I literally have one running to my computer at the moment to record this camera. And at only $99.99, it's 23% off and a lot less than I actually paid for mine here in South Africa, that's for sure. And lastly, we have the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. This 32 gig kit of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz at C16 is $94.99 which is 29% off. But that's it for the deals today. Don't worry, you can find the links to everything and more down in the video description. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Beautiful Reese, but you know what's not gonna be a good UFD deal? 
You know what's going to be a harsh one? Uh, the micro LED TVs that Samsung just announced, which are, according to this headline, five million times faster than your gaming monitor because they got announced with insane quality. So it's only going to start at 110 inches for this display, which is fairly small in my opinion. You could potentially go bigger, but the specs on this, everybody has been waiting for this. This is the next evolution of display technology for mini LED and OLED. Micro LED is going to be the big thing because it's going to have a two, not millisecond, not 0.2 millisecond, but a two nanosecond response time, which is absolutely insane. That is gonna cut down on latency on monitors to be essentially meaningless at that point. So that is incredibly fast. Also, they're gonna start at 4K and 240 Hertz. So the refresh rate's gonna be beautiful. And the screen to body ratio on this bad boy is gonna be 99.9%, .9%, which means it's not gonna even have any bezels. And it's just gonna be gorgeous because it has so many many different, uh, what's it called? It has so many different, uh, LED, it has so, it, uh, with, what am I, words? Micro LED has tons of the benefits of OLED, like the Perpix lighting, as well as the fact that it can actually make good contrast ratio, but it actually doesn't have burn-in, which is the biggest disadvantage with using OLED, is that things are gonna stay on the screen after you're done using them, is one of the reasons why using OLEDs for gaming computers is less admirable because of the, you know, taskbar situation. But the the 110 inch micro LED display that Samsung is announcing is going to start roughly at $100,000, which makes a lot of sense. We saw this when OLED was being implemented at first. It has to start at these high value, high margin items to get it so that they can subsidize the future development of the technology to make it more accessible to everybody. And especially with CES this year, we're getting things like 27 inch OLED screens that are actually gonna be within the bar ballpark of affordable. $1,000 is still obscene, but it's actually nowhere near what OLED used to cost. So it, this is the way to do it. It's the start of it. I'm very excited. Let me know if you are too. And you should be excited for your future in search engines because it's not going to be Google anymore. We're not going to say we Google things. It's Bing now, my friends, because Microsoft is announcing that they are going to be integrating several different AI things into Bing, including ChatGPT, which has been a world favorite in terms of it interacting with a language model. So ChatGPT going to get rolled into Bing. Microsoft had invested a billion dollars into OpenAI back in 2019, and OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT, but also it appears that they might even be rolling in some Dolly 2, as well as any future iterations of these AI, which would mean that potentially Bing could summarize the search results because ChatGPT doesn't actually have an active connection to the internet. Its archives are from 2021 and previous. What it could potentially do is create natural language models for the things that you're trying to search and make it so that it's delivering it to you in a way that's actually digestible and ChatGPT would bring that into effect. Rolling in Dolly to create images for you. Bing could get surprisingly more usable and this is part of what Microsoft essentially wanted Bing to become back when they launched it. They wanted it to be the thing that gave you understandable quick results so that you don't have to go searching for it past even just whatever query you put in the search engine. So this could potentially start off the Bing revolution or Bing Bingvolution, as I like to say, maybe you should get ready for it. Start bookmarking Bing, my friends. And I'm gonna bookmark these speakers because I desperately want them drop announcing at CES. These BMR $129 desktop speakers, which are very versatile because not only can you put them in vertical mode, but they also rotate to go horizontally under your monitors so that you could have a whole host of different options, especially if you don't have a lot of space on your desk. They also have Bluetooth, but they're based on balance mode radiators, which allows them to get really good natural sounding without breaking it up at the higher volumes. The only thing it's gonna lack is some bass response, but you can add a subwoofer to this if you want. But the fact that it has Bluetooth baked in, it's gonna be really good for referencing at least the, the mids and highs. This, oh, I really like them, especially after working with a lot of Drops audio stuff. This has me very excited. Hey, Drop, if you're listening, I, I would sure love some. I, I could rip place my, my speakers here on the hot news set. That, that would be great. Please, potentially. And potentially, I want this as well. I just don't have enough money 
for all of these things that are being announced at CES. LG announcing a wireless TV. Their 97 inch M3 TV is promising to have 4K 120 Hertz wireless streaming from a box that can be connected 30 feet away. This could potentially help for people who want to have a cleaner setup where they want to put their PlayStations, their other devices. What, what do people connect to the TVs these days? You just stick it somewhere in a cubby so that you don't have to deal with all of it and the wires can be wherever. And then you just have a clean TV with the power input that's behind it. And then it becomes very nice, very good uh, price point. Not really clear uh, their ability to actually deliver on this. Not very clear, likely starting at the 97 inch again, because it's going to be very expensive to help further this technology. But wireless 4K 120 hertz being transmitted. That's that's something that I could see is very useful. I would love to have this on a TV, uh, but I won't be able to afford it and I won't be able to afford this graphics card. But Asus and Noctua announcing their RTX 4080. You can see this bad boy right here, according to what we see it looks like it's the exact same as the 30 series. It's the same quad slot design with the same A12 by 25 PWM fans that it was on the RTX 30 series. So it doesn't look like they're going for the Chromax Black Edition. It doesn't look like they're making it bigger. It just looks like it's gonna be a 40 series die under the cooler, which some people want, especially would go really well with that new Fractal North case, which we have in a box over there. I need to do a PC build in that soon. Maybe we'll grab the 4080 for that. But again, I, I don't know if I'll be able to afford it. And I don't know if I'll be able to afford the time to continue hot news today, because it's over. Thank you so much for, for loving me. Bye.